My patchwork quilt style lettering is what I'm going to be walking you through today. It's super easy and beginner friendly, but I wanted to teach you a few tips and tricks that will make the creation process easier and faster. Um, this is one I created just for this tutorial, and that's what we'll walk through creating today. This is one you might have seen me post on Instagram not long ago. So we'll go through each step and some tips and tricks, and then you can get to creating your own. So before we get started, we need to talk about layout for a minute. When you are doing a piece like this, we're going to fit it within the confines of a square, and that means a shorter phrase works better. So if you want to do four lines like me, then four words works really ideal. This phrase had six words. If you wanted to do three, you could divide your square up into just three columns and row, or, or sorry, rows. And so you really got to sketch that out and think about that before you move to your iPad. So what I do after I know how many lines I want to have and roughly how I want to space my words, then I come in with the letter grids from Stefan Kuhns and Ian Bernard. Those are available in both their shops and mine. I'll have a link in the video where you can get those if you want to. They're optional, of course. You could draw your letters freehand, but this really makes it easy for you to come in and trace each letter. Let me add a new layer here. So if I wanted to do a Y, all I have to do is come in and this lets you do every letter of the alphabet. So it's really handy and time saving. So that is how I start each of these pieces. So that's a little time consuming to get your layout set up and draw all your letters. But once you've done that, the really fun part comes in. Um, I'll usually sit on my couch and do this stuff while I am watching a TV show on the background in Netflix. And after you get all your letters done, then we'll come back and add the fun parts. If you don't want to do all the letter grids, here's another way you could kind of do it. So if you open a new square canvas, you can click the wrench tool and turn on the drawing guide. And now let's click edit drawing guide. You can see here, mine is already set that I have four rows, but if you wanted to do say three rows, then you can just adjust the size to make it work for you. Um, you can play around with the different options. Usually four works really well because it's easy to do with this grid symmetry. And then I can just kind of eyeball putting the letters in. And if you're doing them on their own layer, then you can kind of stretch them to fit and then trace them later. That doesn't make a lot of sense now, but it will as we go through. So you can see I've got all my letters drawn out. You can see where the drawing guide is. I don't really need that anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and come to Canvas and toggle that off. Now, it's filling too much of the page, so what I usually do is use the arrow tool, make sure it's on uniform, and I shrink it down just a bit so I can kind of center it and have a little room for white space around the edges. So what I was talking about in the last video is if you're doing anything where, let's say, your U didn't fit quite perfectly, whoops. And I wanted to stretch it a bit to make it fit my row differently. So for that, I would be on free form and you can stretch it and make it fit the line a little better. Sometimes when you do that, it'll get too pixelated. So if that happens, then I usually take this layer, tap the N and reduce the opacity. And then I start a new layer and I'll trace everything over. Yep, it takes a minute to do that, but I'll sit and trace everything over so I have nice clean lines. You don't always have to do that. Just if you notice that you're getting a lot of pixelation because you've stretched or moved your letters too much to make them fit. So after we do that and we've got all our letters on the page, what we're gonna do next is add the color blocking. So to do that, let's go ahead and rename this layer lettering. So we've got our main lettering layer. Um, don't even need that layer. So now I'm gonna tap it. Sometimes I would add a layer with a clipping mask to do color, but when I'm doing this style, I just color right on the letter. So what I wanna do is tap the layer and then click alpha lock. And now all we're gonna do is color right on our letters. So the color palette that I've been using for all of this, you can find free on my blog. It's called the um, Double Rainbow. And all I do is I switch the colors. I think I use maybe seven or eight colors and I come in and I think about where each stroke would be. So I just color right on the letter and do the different color blocking. Again, this step will take you a minute, but it's a lot 
of fun when it's all done. Sometimes you can color drop. If that happens, if you hold it and then reduce the threshold, can you see that thing moving at the top? It'll fill less of your space. So if I go there and then just color that in. So you may find it's easier to just kind of sit and color it in if drag and drop isn't working fabulously for you. Sometimes it works pretty well. Sometimes um, as you get more colors or if you try to change things, it's easier to just grab a monoline brush and color it in. So go through your whole piece until it's color blocked. This is the other phrase, but until all your letters are done and color blocked. I've got everything colored in now, and you can get creative with how you wanna color block the O's, which direction you want things to go. You can change some. You can see on this E, I did the top one long. On that one, I did the bottom one long. On the A's, I decided to keep the way I color block the exact same. That's totally up to you. So now we wanna come in and we want to add our textures to our letters. So for that, I do use a clipping mask. So come over to your layers panel. Oops, I lost my letter. Um, naming. So this one, we're going to add a layer right above our lettering layer. Let me rename that again really quickly here. Lettering. Um, and let's rename our new layer shading. And we're going to tap that and click clipping mask. And that is going to keep anything we do on this layer confined to the letters and it won't show on the background. If I take clipping mask off, then it's all over. Again, clipping mask just keeps it confined to the letter. So we'll turn that off and I'm going to um, just clear that out. Two finger tap will undo anything you've done. So now for our shading, I'm going to use a really nice deep teal color and I am going to use um, from the texture kit, I'm using the speckled shader brush. That's what I always use on these pieces. And then you're just going to come in and literally, oops, I lost clipping lock or clipping mask. So I just, maybe I want it a little smaller. I outline every section of color block. And when you have two sections that butt up against each other, I do that section as well. And that's kind of part of what gives it the quilted look as well. So you don't have to be super precise with this. Just come in and do all your letters. And then after I'm done with all my letters, I usually change, you tap the N and I change it to color burn. Can you see how that changed normal? It looks all blue. And as I slide to color burn, most of it looks like the color or a variation of the color it's on, but the yellow stays um, kind of a blue-green color, which didn't bother me. So I left that on all the pieces like this that I have done. So for my heart, I didn't want it to be the teal color, so I actually used white for that. And to do that, I need to add a new layer, and that will be our heart shading. And again, I'm going to do tap it and clipping mask. And then for this one, I did a white outline. No real reason, I just like the way it looked better than the teal for the heart. And that's it. Then we'll come back in and we'll add our little stamp doodles and a little doodles in the background and we're all done. I've added yet another new layer and renamed it stamps. And now we're going to go ahead and add our details in. So for this, I used everything is from my creativity kit and you could hand draw them in. I just find stamps a lot quicker because I work with them a lot. And for each section of color block, I alternate what kind of stamps I use. Um, I mostly use stamps, but every now and then I would use the felt fine liner and do something like just a line. And then I'm going to go in I'll use a star this time and however many you use just is whatever kind of fits best. And then I did circles and I just kind of again did a pattern. So I kept going. I'll show you on this piece. I did the exact same pattern on both pieces just to keep it easy. Um, I think I changed up the star I used on that one. And so every time I color block I did let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different 
stamps or lines, and then I would just repeat it throughout the whole piece until it's all done. So do that step. And then all we have to do is come back in and add some little hearts and dots in the background to fill the space. So I've gone through and I've added some heart and dot stamps to just kind of fill and balance the space and all my letter doodles on the color blocking, of course, and now my whole piece is done. So what I did on this one is pretty much the same as what I did on this one. But then I did a version, the very first time I did this style was actually at Christmas. And I did a slight variation um, with the types of doodles, but you can see sometimes maybe you wanna fill the space with a little illustration depending on your phrase works out. And since this was Christmas, um, a star worked really well here. That's another one of the stamps. And then I just added some dots in a row along. So you can get creative with it and really make it your own. Um, but I hope you have a lot of fun with this. I feel like it's so much fun for beginners and advanced users alike, and the end result just comes out so cute.